Hello and welcome to today's webcast. Today we're proud to present a panel discussion on a facet of care that is very important to your patients, and that is how they perceive the level of teamwork among your staff members. And we have representatives from three PRC clients who are all recognized as performance champions on the aspect of teamwork. Before we go too far, let's cover some of the logistics for today's presentation that will make this an excellent webcast experience for you. If you wish to enlarge the viewing screen, just click on the icon in the lower right corner. This webcast is going to be a little different as it relates to how you ask questions. We will not be addressing questions from you, our viewers, during this live broadcast. However, I still encourage you to ask questions, which will be answered via email. Now, to ask a question of the panel members, use the question box, which is just to the right of the viewing screen. If you've enlarged the viewing screen, you must minimize it in order to access the question box. This webcast will be available for on-demand viewing, Simply go to prccustomresearch.com and click on the webcast tab at the top of the home page and then click on webcasts on demand. Choose the webcasts of interest, enter the required viewing information, and now you can view the webcast at your leisure on the device of your choice. Please remember, if you view the webcast at a later date, you can still ask questions by using that question box. Again, your questions will be answered by email. Now, one final note on the housekeeping details, and I'm going to call this the Murphy's Law note. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. As you can imagine, doing a live broadcast on the Internet, anything can happen. And in the past, we've had a couple of situations develop where, beyond our control, we've experienced audio deterioration. If this happens, we will make some adjustments, which will require us to be off the air for about seven seconds. Please stay with us if this happens, as we will come back on the air with the situation corrected and continue the broadcast. Just finally, have you seen this graphic before? If you have, it's used probably on a black and white television, and you're, I'm guessing, 55 years of age or older. Well, now that we have the housekeeping details and the technology disclaimer behind us, let's move to today's presentation about teamwork. And before I introduce our panel, let me take just a few minutes to quickly mention a few points about teamwork. First of all, how do we measure teamwork? Well, in the PRC Patient Experience Survey, we ask a question about teamwork. And this question is simply worded, how would you rate the overall teamwork between the doctors, nurses, and staff as excellent, very good, good, fair, or poor. This question is one of our most common key drivers of excellence. When you have teamwork as your number one key driver of excellence for a unit or a department, this means you can have the most impact on your overall quality of care score if strategies or initiatives are developed that raise the perception of teamwork. And I want you to know, if you have teamwork as a key driver, you have a lot of company. You are one of 197 hospitals in the PRC database that are facing the same issue. And believe it or not, this is a facet of the patient experience that is not even addressed in the HCAP survey. Yet we know that it's very important in driving the patient experience and creating a culture of excellence. <clears throat> if you're struggling with your teamwork score, I want you to know that the Institute for Healthcare Excellence does have a specific workshop to teach participants the communication tools that are critical for effective interaction among team members. If you'd like more information on how the Institute can help you, please contact me and I'll connect you to the right people. I also want to share with you what we see in the PRC normative database. As you can see, over the past 10 years, the average raw percent of excellent for teamwork has gone from 49.8% to 57.3%. Now that's noted in that 50th percentile column. And this represents a 16% increase in the score. 
PRC's clients are doing better today than just a few years ago. In fact, if you were at the 50th percentile in 2010 and had 55.1% of your patients saying you were excellent for teamwork, and you haven't improved your score, today you would be below the 40th percentile ranking. And the average hospital 10 years ago would actually be below the 20th percentile ranking today. The tide is rising, and you must improve your scores just to keep your current percentile ranking. It's also important to note when looking at percentile rankings that the actual raw score, the percent of excellent, doesn't cover the whole range of 0 to 100. We don't have any clients who get 0% excellent on teamwork, nor do we have any clients who get 100% excellent on teamwork. In 2015, the lowest scoring hospital in PRC's database still received 31.3% of its patients saying excellent when evaluating teamwork, and the highest scoring hospital received 80.7%. So of all the hospitals, they're all bunched together in a 50 percentage point range, which is actually larger than we see with other aspects of care. For many questions, there's only a 25 raw percentage point range that separates the lowest scoring hospital from the highest scoring hospital. And this is why you can see big fluctuations in your percentile rankings with only a few raw percentage point changes in your actual score. Now, I hope this information helps you better understand some of the data behind teamwork. And if you haven't accessed the normative database, or the best practices application on prceasyview.com, I encourage you to do so. There is a wealth of information on prceasyview.com that can help you better understand your scores. And if you need help, ask your project manager or contact PRC EasyView Help Desk. They are always there to help you. Now it's time to introduce our panel who have graciously agreed to be a part of this webcast. And as mentioned before, they represent three organizations that are performance champions on the aspect of teamwork. Now, we'll do this introduction alphabetically, and let's start with ANMED Women's and Children's Hospital in Anderson, South Carolina. We have two individuals joining us from ANMED, Amy Sharp, who is the manager of 3E Surgery and Pediatrics, and Hope Campbell, who is the director of Women and Children's Services and Behavioral Health. Amy and Hope, thank you for your time and for being with us today. Thank you for having us. From Arkansas Children's Hospital in Little Rock, Arkansas, we have Pam Trevino, who is the Clinical Risk and Safety Director. Pam, thank you for being with us today. Glad to be here. Our third organization with us today is St. Vincent's Women's Hospital in Indianapolis, Indiana. And we have two individuals joining us, Angela Scott, who is the manager of the family care unit, and Tawana Blackwell, who is the newborn ICU manager. Angela and Tawana, thank you for joining us, and welcome to the webcast. Thank you. Thank you. Great. I want to also thank you all again for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us. I know we've, we've asked a lot of you. But let's jump into some questions. And this, is, this first question is one that I would like all three organizations to respond to. And if you can, try to be as specific as possible. But why do you feel your organization does well with the aspect of teamwork? Angela and Tuana, let's start with you. Well, I think in NICU, um, teamwork is such an essential piece for us. I mean, everything we do has such impact on our infants and our families who are as much our patients as our infants are. So we start with teamwork being part of the interview process. We actually do behavioral questions um, in our interviews around teamwork and we include a discussion during that interview about the expectation of teamwork um, as part of our culture so that new associates coming in understand that that's essential. The expectation is that they will ask questions and ask questions for the first year 
um, if they aren't asking questions, then it's a red flag. And I have associates coming in, nurses coming in saying, you know, I know they can't know it yet, they're too new, and they're not asking questions, so they're guessing. Or they're, you know, just trying to figure out how to do it on their own. So we quickly go to them and say, hey, remember, we had that, that discussion. You have to ask questions. It's okay. It's not looked down upon. Everything from as simple of, hey, come take a look. Do you think this IV looks bad? You know, what are your thoughts on this? Or I'm thinking this is what I need to do in response to the baby's cues and keep validating what they're thinking with other nurses um, and the doctors that they work with. Uh, we have a great staff. They work well as a team together. Uh, we're careful about who we bring into that team to make sure they're going to fit. We ask for our nurses to give us feedback so they're part of the interview process. They spend four hours shadowing before we hire someone. They have to come in and spend four hours beside a nurse out on the floor making sure the environment is what they expect it to be when they get hired in and making sure we think they're going to be a team player before we bring them on board. And then we continue that expectation as part of their evaluation and ongoing process. And I agree, as Tawana said, we do use that very um, in-depth interview process as well. Um, we look for keywords in the candidate's answers where they'll say they value teamwork or they don't leave until their team is done or they think everyone should do their fair share. So very important to bring in the right candidates. Then at the end of the interview, um, I will remind them that we value our professional, respectful environment and that teamwork is very, very important to us. And we'll take them on a tour of the unit and they'll see our team in action. And our team is very friendly and welcoming. And most candidates will say, wow, I really like it here. You can, you can feel that it's different. Um, for us, our journey, it was a five to seven year journey. It wasn't easy. We brought two hospitals together. St. Vincent had purchased a for-profit hospital and so we blended two staffs that were one was 90 and one was about 40. So we all had different styles, didn't know each other. There were a lot of barriers and we would hear from our patients that um, they were often confused because uh, they would be told different things and the care seemed different. And some providers would be very engaging and professional and efficient and some would be less engaged, somewhat flustered and the patients didn't appreciate the difference in care. So it became evident that we needed to do two things. One, set clear expectations, and we developed a behavioral expectation contract. And there were 23 bullet points, which basically said what behaviors were expected from your tone, your collaborative um, attitude. And it's very measurable. And if those behaviors were not demonstrated, the associate would get a verbal coaching and together we would develop a plan, a performance improvement plan. And I was their advocate and we would meet and see if they were being successful. Um, many were successful. Those who weren't, um, I would hear from staff members and patient feedback that they still were maintaining unacceptable behaviors and we would meet for a written um, warning and you are allowed to have written warning one, written warning two, and then third was termination. And we did have several terminations because the attitude didn't fit. So I'm very protective that we maintain that environment. Thank you, Tawana and Angela. I mean, very specific information, very valuable. Pam, what's happening at uh, Arkansas Children's uh, on this aspect of um, why do you feel your organization is doing so well? Well, our organization really put a lot of effort into the, making the culture being one of team. So several years ago, all of our internal things changed to team. So our internal web page is Team ACH, and it has logos that say Team ACH. We got lanyards for our badge that said Team ACH. And from the minute people come into the door, and they go through our orientation, our, our organizational orientation, which is called Traditions. And it talks about where we've come from, and it talks about how we're all a team, and it encourages people to find where they fit for, they fit into in regards to caring for the patient. So, and being pediatrics, we always talk about the kids. So, what are you doing to care for the kids? And so, even from the housekeeping people who are keeping things clean, and the, the financial people who are collecting 
money, all of those things all go forward for the kids. And so even if you look at our webpage from outside, it says Team ACH. So it's just really a part of who we are, and we talk about being Team ACH all the time. Great, great. Hope and Amy, would you care to comment uh, about AdMeds Women's and Children's Hospital and why you feel your organization is doing so well? Yeah, um, I think that here at, at AdMed Health Women and Children's, we've had a culture that's really been in existence for some years. Um, here recently, we certainly have been like every other hospital in the country and attempting to improve all of our patient satisfaction scores across the organization. But here at the Women and Children's Hospital, there's always been more of a focus on teamwork. You have a very good nurse-physician uh, relationships that exist in the maternity services areas, the pediatric area, as well as the three um, surgical area. And when Amy and I actually screen applicants for the interview, we tell them and set the expectation that you are joining a team. We're not hiring you individually. We're hiring you to be part of a team. And, and here is what this team has already done for our organization. They are our case setters here and have really raised the bar with their scores. Um, <clears throat> they've been you know, multiple national patient satisfaction winners, as I'm sure these other ladies and their organizations have as well. But we let them know, this is what you're walking into. It's a really, really exceptional team. We do much of the same behavioral interview screening questions that the other ladies have mentioned earlier. Uh, and so we're really looking for a good fit for um, the team that's already existing. And we do include the nurses in the interview process as well. There are times also when we also include the physicians, depending on what the position we're interviewing mm -hmm. for is as well. Great. And the staff enjoy being a part of that. With us being a magnet facility, they love being part of those interviews and knowing um, who the people are that are potential candidates for those positions and, and giving their feedback to say, I do think they'd be part of the team. And I don't even have to prompt them. They're already asking them about um, teamwork and that kind of thing when they get to talk to them. So I think it's ingrained. Great. Thank you very much. This is a question that's going to be kind of hard for your organizations because both, all three organizations are very high-performing organizations. But as you take a look at today, are there any specific steps that you're taking to enhance the perception of teamwork? Uh, Pam, would you want to start this conversation uh, at Arkansas Children's Hospital? Sure. Part of our efforts have been around scripting. So when there is a physician who's seeing a patient and they're going to leave and the nurse is going to come and do something, to be able to specifically say, so this is what we're going to do. The nurse will come in and provide this to you. When we have patients who go back into the OR, we say our team is going to take excellent care of your patient or of your child, or this is an excellent doctor who's going to see you today, so that we're speaking each other up all the time. So really kind of scripting that excellent and scripting that concept of we are all in this together. Great. Angela and Tuana, would you like to comment on um, what's happening at St. Vincent's? Yes, thank you. Um, well, as Pam mentioned, we use scripting as well. Everything from using SBAR as a form of communication between team members and aid it when we're dealing with customers and stuff have been great tools uh, with helping with making that cohesiveness and that communication with our customers, our parents, family, friends who come through. But we've done things that kind of build on interdisciplinary teams. So we have um, multidisciplinary rounds every week. So every patient, and we're an 87-bed NICU, so every patient gets rounded on every week by every member of the team that's involved in their health care. Um, it's nurse-led, so it's really that combination of people getting to talk about their care plan and what what is bet working, what needs to be modified, what changes um, can we do, how are the families perceiving things. So it keeps the team feeling like they're connected to each other. Our physicians, our neonatologists, we have 22 of them on staff, and they're on a first name basis with the nurses. They do things for our nurses to help build teamwork. Um, they'll bring food in, they take them to, we have a minor league baseball team uh, in Indianapolis, um, the Indians that they will take the whole, not only all the nursing staff and the respiratory therapists, but their husbands, wives, significant others, kids. 
They'll take them to a baseball game. We have chili parties in the fall. They take us all out bowling come, you know, midwinter. So they do activities outside of the unit as well as keeping that open communication while they're at work as well. And it kind of keeps that team flow going. Um, we also are really quick to look at things. If we get concerns brought about someone who's not um, participating on a team or not you know, really going along with things or we have concerns with clicks, then we, as management, we have a responsibility to jump on that quickly and make sure that we're having those individual conversations. But we try to put as many things in place as we can to support team concept and make sure that they value what each of them bring and they do it in a way that's professional and respectful. Great. And um, we have recently added interdisciplinary huddles. Um, our setup is such that mother baby is on third floor and NICU occupies second and third floor and labor room and high risk is on second floor. So we are spread out. So at nine and nine, we will gather the obstetricians, the residents, the NEOs, the charge nurse from NICU, labor room, so we can all see who is on the team for the shift. And we will share concerns and watch out for things that might happen. And that's really a great bonding moment. We're like, OK, here's our team. Go team. Um, in addition to that, our charge nurses, um, they have taken leadership classes every month that we offered so their communication is better and they can lead their team. They lead a five minute huddle at the beginning of each shift just for the individual unit again to to say here's your team. Uh, we do leader rounding on both our associates and our patients and then we share the feedback via email so everyone knows what's being said, what's going well, what we're going to be working on to improve and um, we just are always looking for new ways. And Tawana mentioned all those great activities that uh, her unit participates in. Our unit is very good about organizing that for themselves as well. So they really think of each other as a family, it seems. Great, great. Well, thank you. Um, Amy and Hope, uh, what steps are you taking to sustain your high scores on teamwork there at AnMed Women's and Children's? I think a lot of the, the same things that they were just mentioning we have in place too. I think when you start at the beginning with the interview process and you bring somebody on and they're introduced into that culture, I think they're able to see it in action. Mm -hmm. I've never heard one of my nurses ever say that's not my job or that's not my patient. They jump in whatever needs to be done and they keep the patient as the most important thing. Um, so I think that's very important. Also the physicians, because we have such specialized areas out here with the surgeons and with the pediatricians and the OBGYNs, I think they're able to connect with staff just like they were talking about. They're very engaged, not only with quality outcomes and what's going on with the patients, but also with the staff and they know them all by name and are, and are very um, collaborative in everything that they do. Um, we also do a lot of work with sharing our scores, talking to the staff about it in staff meetings and posting and all that kind of stuff. And if they even see a slight drop, they take it very personal. So that's something they take a lot of pride in, in their scores and knowing that they stay, stay really high. Great. We also I'm sorry. We also, um, you know, during the bedside shift reporting, you know, if there's any concerns at that time, they see the, the nurses working together as a team. They also may, in, on one of the units, actually have OT or PT in there with them as well. If there's any complaints, it's always, always an opportunity to address it at that time and even manage up other departments if you need to. Outside of that, as an organization, uh, we have developed a patient family advisory council, so we actually have former patients who are sitting on our council. So we, we get a lot of great feedback um, from that from those individuals and, and it's pretty enlightening at times, but certainly there's some opportunities there always that we can work on. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You know, if you had to name one thing that uh, you feel had the most impact on increasing your teamwork scores, um, or maybe another way of looking at it is, if, what advice do you have for an organization as they embark on improving their teamwork scores? Um, Pam, again, let's start with you. So I think really, truly respecting each other is really important. And so respecting the roles that we do and not overstepping that. So knowing that we all really work together and really putting an effort forward to 
to acknowledge the different members of the team and what they've done. So I think that that's kind of the base of everything. But I think really, truly, we did um, error prevention training, which had a lot to do with communication and making sure that we were open to talking to one another or for questioning one another. And that really helps to build the team, having teams go through that together. So that was really helpful for us. I also think that really the scripting has helped us a lot. So not only do we say it, but then you have to follow through mm -hmm. because everybody can spot a fake. So it's about not just saying it, but also doing it. So when the doc says we're going to get the nurse, that the nurse comes. Or when the nurse says we need to run that by somebody, that that person actually comes by. Yep, yep. I can't agree more. Amy and Hope, uh, how would you answer this question? I think it has to do with the people. I think if you spend more time trying to, to find the right fits for those positions, you can teach them anything along the way. But if they have a good attitude and they have um, you know, that sense of teamwork coming into it, I think you're, you're going to come out on the, on the good end of that. Um, we just have a phenomenal group of people that truly care about their job and exactly what Pam just said, our patients really pick up on that. They tell me all the time that they feel like the nurses and the staff really care about them. They learn about the patients. They know that it's somebody down the hall that loves to play golf and that's why they're trying to help them get better. Um, it's not just Miss Smith down the hall in 75. They truly love what they do and, and patients can, can tell a fake. You're exactly right. Mm -hmm. So they care about their job and their patients. Mm -hmm. We um, we say that all the time and people look at us often like we're kind of hokey pokey, uh, mm -hmm. you know, really kind of making that up. But it is absolutely true. We've had new hires come over to our unit and, and, and just really be um, shadowing one of our nurses who would be his mentor and it was a, a male nurse actually and he came out of the room and he said to me he said you know you, you just really can't fake caring and it you can feel it you can feel the difference with um, our nursing staff and we do have some that are seasoned I think that is another key we have very low turnover rates um, in our organization too so you know you have people who are engaged employees they like their job they like their teammates they're staying for a while and when you do have the new hires who are coming in then they they have great mentors who are going to teach them the way and we our concepts are 24 hours seven days a week we don't just implement these things on day shift Monday through Friday and the other thing certainly that I would add to this is that we have um, a tremendous amount of organizational support, particularly you know from our C-suite. So they believe in what we do and and the, and our patients and making sure that they have the best possible care and that our patients are committed to their care and that they're going to treat them with respect. They they hold the physicians and the nursing staff and other employees accountable for the patient experience. So teamwork's a part of it. There's not one individual who does it alone. And I will give kudos, someone mentioned their housekeepers earlier. Um, this three surgical unit one, um, we give out the quarterly star for the highest patient satisfaction. And it just slides across from one hall to the other out here on one of our floors. But this particular time we had won it for three surgical and the nurse who didn't take credit for the unit, she said, we won this this time because our housekeeper sings to our patient. The patients see that, you know, they, they see that these people are all together working together to make them have the experience. Yeah. That's a great story there, Hope. Uh, Angela and Twana, I don't want you guys to feel left out. So here's a question for you. Did you find that you had communication between the staff members pretty much consistently in place, but but maybe just needed to make it or make the patients more aware of it? Uh, and if so, how'd you, how'd you do that? Well, that's a great question. Um, actually, one of the things we started doing was we felt like we did have good communication. And, and it, it's phenomenal sometimes when we have a nurse that, you know, she we do primary nursing. And, and with infants, that's really important because you get to know the behavior of the baby. And you can pick up on things before they become um, big problems. So. I'll see an email go out um, from one nurse, from one primary nurse, asking colleagues, hey, I need a counterpart on night shift, or, you know, I typically work Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, so would someone else consider picking up this baby while, you know, for my off shift? So they really encourage each other to become part of that primary care nursing team for that individual patient, 
Um, they talk each other up to families. We started doing rounding with families. Um, again, our babies can't really give us the responses, but boy, their parents sure can. So we will round with them and ask the parents, how do you think it's going? Do you feel like you're getting good teamwork out of them? Are the doctors and nurses answering your questions the way you need to hear it? Um, and if we have a family who doesn't like a particular nurse or just doesn't feel comfortable with them, it's okay. You're going to have personalities that differ, and that's not to say that nurse is a bad nurse in any ways. It's just saying she's not the personality I'm the most comfortable with, and letting her and the family know that's okay. They're under an enormous amount of stress by having an infant in an ICU. So if personality is part of the their anxiety, we can remove that. We can easily just have another nurse start taking them, and our nurses don't feel bad about it. I mean, they kind of, we have to talk them through it, but make them understand if that's the barrier, if that's the thing that adds the least bit of anxiety to that parent, then let's just change it. Um, is there any reason we can't change it? And I've never had a nurse come back and say, yeah, I'm upset by this, or, you know, no, I still want to take them, or I want to talk to the parents. They pretty much realize that, hey, it's stressful, and whatever I need to do to make it easier for this family or make their experience better, then I'll gladly do, and even if that means stepping aside and having someone else step in and be the nurse for them. So it's really just that open communication. We have an open door policy on management. My office is setting outside the NICU, right on the um, where the parents and the visitors come through. There's a sign on the door that says, knock, if it's unlocked, come on in. Mm -hmm. So that's not only for staff, but that's for the parents and families. We also have the managers and the director's face and phone numbers posted for parents to see right when they enter the unit. So they, if they have a concern, they know who to look for and how to reach us. Um, same way for staff. They all have my cell phone number. They know that they can call me at any time. Um, they know I'm going to call them too if I have a concern. I'm not going to wait to bring it up. So it's really just keeping that open communication going. Um, well, Tom, I'm sorry to say we did not have a consistent means of communication between staff. As I mentioned before, we were merging the two cultures and we had inconsistent performers. Um, they have been oriented differently. The charge nurses have different styles, and it was a mess, for lack of a better word. So when you ask what did we do to improve that, um, the first step was to work small and find charge nurses that were consistent role models. So everyone that did charge, um, we changed up the process and we said, now you're going to have to interview if you want to be a charge nurse. And the charge nurse role came with very specific um, criteria that you had to serve at least on one unit committee, um, that you needed to get your uh, nursing certification in our specialty, and that you needed to attend a leadership uh, meeting that we had monthly. And we involved the staff. It was a team interview process. So we got our core uh, of 14 charge nurses who I knew, um, like Hope said, 24-7, they were, they were modeling the same behaviors. It wasn't, oh, it's the weekend and we're going to be lax. So that was our first step. And then um, through their leadership meetings, we told them that they were accountable for feedback and mentoring and the high reliability principles of reporting concerns. And as I mentioned earlier, we incorporated that with that unit uh, behavioral expectation list. And we made um, holding people accountable simple because we heard, well, how can I hold someone accountable? So we would use the list, highlight the behavior that wasn't adhered to. We had a coaching form readily available, and the staff and the leadership would work on a plan. Um, for example, we would have frequent complaints that, oh, I don't like following nurse so-and-so because she leaves so much work undone and I have to play catch up. So we would um, meet with uh, several nurses, including the nurse who didn't get her work done, and politely describe, you know, we have a concern because A, B, and C weren't done on these dates, and we want you to know how that affects the team. And a couple of those conversations were awkward, but then they got much easier for those involved. 
and we would come up with solutions. So in those instances, the offgoing nurse who tended not to have things done would then ask, is there anything I have forgotten or anything I should do before I leave? And that really helped improve staff morale. Great, great, thank you. Well, let me also ask Angela and Twana, uh, and I think I know the answer to this question because you referred to it earlier, but so t is teamwork something that you actually have on your on your employee evaluation forms when you're evaluating employees? Absolutely, we both do. We actually have um, very similar um, expectations, very similar evaluation forms. So we use SurveyMonkey as a vehicle for collecting peer feedback. We actually let the staff pick two coworkers, um, and then that they work side by side, one on an off-going shift, two on the same shift. So actually that's a total of three. And then we ask the charge nurses, the supervisors, and a few anonymous people um, to give us feedback. And part of that includes teamwork. Is that someone that is a team player? So that information is part of their evaluation. Um, but if there's concerns, they're never going to hear it first time at evaluation. That's that's really not that's not fair to them. You know, the whole expectation is you want people to excel and you want them to be good nurses and good represent, representatives of your hospital. So you, then you have to give them feedback. You have to give them direct feedback. So we do include it on evaluations. But it's an ongoing process. So if we have concerns, we're going to bring it to them. In the same way, when they're doing well, we're going to give them pats on the back. And if that's an email, thank you, or a handwritten note, or sometimes just walking up and saying, hey, you had a really bad assignment, um, but you did a great job. Or, you know what, I really saw how you stepped over and helped out Amy today, and she was really struggling with her assignment. Thank you for doing that. Um, our feedback from them has been, we want to hear. We want to hear when we're not doing it right, and we want to hear when we are. Um, and they don't want to wait for an evaluation time, even though it is on the tool, but <laughs> we try to give it to them more live and in relevant time of what's going on. Okay. Okay. I would say absolutely ditto to what she, uh, what she said. Um, we do encourage positive feedback, and we'll remind staff to try to say at least one positive thing during the shift to as many of their team members as they can. And then we also remind them if you've given constructive feedback, um, try to give three positives for every constructive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, great. You know, uh, my last question is one that, um, you know, as I was preparing for this uh, webcast and going out to the PRC normative database, and if you go out there and you look under the aspect of teamwork, one of the things that you'll notice is that there are a lot of children's hospitals and there are a lot of women's hospitals and women and children's hospitals who are performance champions. And why do you feel that there are so many women and children's hospital performance champions on the aspect of teamwork? Uh, Pam, would you care to comment on this? And, and I'm interested for all of you to share, but we'll start with Pam. I think there are multiple reasons. I think, you know, people go into different aspects of nursing for different reasons. And so I think, you know, people who want to work with babies or want to work with pediatrics, it's a, there's a little bit that it's a certain type of person. But besides that, I think that it also has to do with just the nature of our care. So we're a pediatric hospital, so we're already partnering with parents from the very beginning mm -hmm. because it's not about a patient being able to say, this is what I want done, most of the time they can't tell us and they don't understand. And so we're talking about how the parent is part of the team and we talk to the parents and say, you're part of our team and we want you to be speaking up and we want you to remind us to wash our hands or remind us to tell you what we're getting meds for. So you're part of our team too. So, you know, that's kind of embedded in just how we give care is that the parents are part of the team. So I think that they feel like they're part and so it rolls over to when they're asking us, so how do you do on teamwork? Well, we were part of that team as well. And so I think all of that runs together. But I also think that it's really easy, so from a very different standpoint, I think it's very easy when we need something, you put a picture of a kid someplace. And everyone's like, aww. So there's a certain extent to which that helps us as well because we can all say we're doing it for the kids. 
And for people who do peds and have that kind of a mindset, it's very easy to think, okay, this is really bad, but I'm doing it for the kids. And I don't know that it's, so I'm not an adult nurse, so I don't know. I think it's a lot harder to think, oh, it's hard to do it for this bariatric patient, or it's hard to do it for the person who's, you know, abused their body or those kinds of things. Because we think of, well, the poor kids, it wasn't all their fault. So I think there's a little bit that you can really get behind kids in a, in a different kind of way, which is not to say this defeatist. It's just I think it comes naturally because you're doing it for the kids. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, uh, Angela or uh, Hope or Amy, Twana, do you guys have any other things you'd like to add to that? I'd just like to say that I think Pam's nailed it on that. I think because they're children and infants, they're, they're seen as innocents. Um, they're, it's totally not their fault. And it's as the same way if you're talking in nursing or you're talking in education or wherever. If it's a child or an infant involved, that's the focus. The village rallies. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's historical. We've always done it. And we're not only, humans are not the only one. The animal, animal kingdom does the same thing. When it's an innocence, when it's a child or a youngster or an infant, people come together to help that, that situation. It pulls at our heartstrings. It's, it's an easy kind of nursing effort to do. Uh, which is unique to that. It's not the same on the adult side. Um, maybe it should be. Um, maybe we shouldn't be so judgmental sometimes, but it's it's easy to not be when it comes to children and infants. Yeah. I think, too, that uh, from the comments that you guys have made, though, that a lot of the things that you are doing, a lot of the specific strategies that you are doing are strategies that all acute care hospitals on any unit can put in place, though. Uh, you know, choosing the right people, um, you know, building that camaraderie, uh, everything. I think there's a lot of great applications and good, good. Can I, add, can I just add something to that too? We we are a women's and children's hospital out here, and I think we did start out kind of the same way. We had all the maternity services and pediatrics out here, and our my three East unit was a women's surgical unit. How it started, it was mostly hysterectomies and mastectomies, but as healthcare's kind of changed, we've added several populations out here, and we do have men now, actually, so we don't just have women and children. Um, yeah, we have orthopedic patients, urology patients, uh, medical patients, um, and I think what started out maybe as that mission-minded has grown, and we do have lots of those um, adults and things that you were saying maybe doesn't have the same effect, but I think it's those nurses. They care so much about that hip replacement and that knee replacement, just like they do about their new mom mm -hmm. that maybe came in or whatever. I think it's those people that are working together. You know, it's the environment. We have a beautiful building out here. They even tell me that they love the food. So <laughs> I think everything <laughs> kind of comes together to make that whole experience, but even for the adults, not just for those cute yeah. kids. Great, great. Well, and I I need to add in here, I also don't want to say that it's not, that it's impossible. We have a burn center, and our burn center is mostly adults. So we do have a, a pocket in the in the organization. I think probably a better way to say it is that I think it comes more naturally mm -hmm. when you're talking about doing it for the kids. And and so it's kind of an innate piece, and I think it does spread, but I think it, it's probably easier for us to go down that road just kind of culturally, but I don't think that it's impossible. Like, I think it's you build it and it grows and it continues to grow and it continues to grow and it doesn't have to be just because it's innate. I just think it's it's a there's a little bit that I think it's easier for us to start out. Great, thank you very much. Um, if I could just add one thing in in addition to what everyone else has always already said, with the kids particularly, the parents are always here. They're always here. And so on some level, yes, we are dealing with adults. You know, it is their perception of what we're doing for them and their perception of the teamwork. And I think it really sets a higher expectation knowing those parents are not going to give you a break. You know, they're going to be here. They're not going to go away. Whereas a lot with the adults, you do see them go home for periods of time. Mm -hmm. But with these children, we have, we have those parents here with us. Our length of stay is pretty short because we have a general pediatric unit and level two nursery and a mommy baby unit that does room and in. So our length of stay are fairly short, but nevertheless, they're with us and we try, we do very well making them happy while they are here. Great. 
Well, th I want to thank you guys, um, and thank you for those comments. I want to thank our participants, our panelists, for the time and, and sharing with us those stories and what you're doing. Now, before we leave, I do have a favor to ask of you, our viewers. If you would like us to address a topic in a future webcast, please share with us your idea or the challenge that you're facing. In that question box, if you'll remember, it's just to the right of the minimized viewing screen. Do me a favor and just type in future topic and then share with us your idea or a challenge you're facing. We want these webcasts to really be a resource for you. Again, I want to thank our participants. Uh, I want to thank Tawana and Angela from St. Vincent's Women's Hospital in Indianapolis, Pam from Arkansas Children's Hospital in beautiful Little Rock, Arkansas, and again, also Hope and Amy from AdMed Women's and Children's in Anderson, South Carolina. And thank you, our viewers, for watching PRC TV.